Hello and welcome to another Bones 5 Kickstarter review. Today we'll be looking at the sixth group of add-ons that I managed to pick up. And as the title suggests, we'll be looking at the Dragonfolk Adventurers, the Townsfolk, and the Brindwind Extras. Currently only the Townsfolk are still in the PM, but the Dragonfolk Adventurers and Brindwind Extras have already hit retail. If you're interested in acquiring them or any other Kickstarter item, scan the QR code at the end of the video or visit pm.reapermini.com or reapermini.com for more information. If this is your first time seeing a review in this series, I have many more deep dives on my channel for you to check out. But you can get to them quicker by clicking the card in the corner of the video or by checking out the links in the description. Alright, now without further ado, on with the review. This first add-on set is actually not available in the PM anymore. However, it is currently already on its way to retail release, and you can pre-order it from some second-hand stores if that's what you're interested in. I'm of course talking about the Brinewind Extra set. This is a bundle of scattered terrain and other bits to supplement Reaper's Brinewind figures, many of which were offered here in this very Kickstarter. If you haven't seen my Brinewind expansion review, I recommend checking that out after this video. But returning to the add-on at hand, this first item will not actually be in the retail box by the looks of it. This here is the Raft of the Damned, a grotesque raft made from driftwood, dead bodies, and a shark for steering. I'm choosing to believe this is a zombie shark, as otherwise this is just awful. I haven't fully assembled it, but it's mostly one piece, just requiring a few additional parts to be glued down, which I would recommend doing so after painting, not before. So there's a lot of nooks and crannies that would be very difficult to paint once assembled. Yeah, pretty dark start to the set, but the rest is much less dark. Our next big set item is this, the Buckboard Cart. In one of the earlier designs, there seems to have been a little lantern that sat on the riding plank here, but... I'm not missing it. This is a nice looking piece. It's great if you want to set up a diorama or if your players happen to acquire a sizable cart. There's plenty of room for cargo or players. And if you glue things right, you can keep the wheels turning. I'd say this is probably one of the all around most useful pieces from this set. Following that up, we have another big set piece, the Drunken Mermaid Bar. It's a chunk of a nice tavern made from old barrels, repurposed doors, and driftwood. It was also very warped when I got it. I had to boil and ice this to get it to shape. And even then, it took some modification, so be prepared for that when you pick this set up. It simply wasn't too difficult though. I will say that this piece really seems best used in a pirate or nautical setting and would look a little out of place otherwise. So keep that in mind if you're just looking for a standard tavern bar. Still, this fits its niche nicely and is supplemented by a lot of other items in this set. This is the Pirate Grave Marker. This is yet another not a gold or pirate specific thing. However, I think you could get away with plopping this down near other bodies of water without too many raised eyebrows. This could be a very interesting bit of terrain for your party to stumble across that hints at a greater story. Who put this grave here? Who is this person? What loot does he have on him? These are all questions you should be prepared to answer if you have a cleric or a rogue in your party because with a piece like this, they're sure going to want to know. Our next bits of terrain are some great all-purpose terrain bits, even though they may have been designed more for the tavern and dock setting in mind. We have a little dining set, various different barrels stored in a variety of ways, some of which are stacked up in racks like this, and others piled up on top of each other. And we also get some nice crates in two different sizes, all made from this nice, thick, durable plastic. These will all be great bits of scatter for set dressing, possibly even providing cover opportunities too. For the right price, I would probably be willing to just pick up a bunch of these and fill out a whole warehouse. Yeah, I, I never thought I would be uh, this excited about little crates and barrels, but that is indeed where I'm at. Also get a few, and by a few I mean three, pieces of a dock. So I move these little boards and everything else aside. 
you can see we get two smaller pieces and one longer section that is the length of two of the smaller ones. You could use these rather for a walkway of sorts instead of a dock, so that's a bit more of use you could get out of them. They're also slightly different, so you're not just looking at the same pattern repeating over and over again if you're using. My only nitpick is we only get three of these, and they're a small section. It would have really been nice if we had gotten more. Speaking of mooring, let's pull this next showpiece into port. It's the sloop. It's just a little boat, but it's big enough that you could fit a whole adventuring party on board. It comes with a lot of little things to throw into it, much of which is just absolutely tiny bits of terrain. We get some useful stuff though, like the sack and a treasure chest and even more barrels. Looked like something went wrong with the mold on my treasure chest. Most of the stuff we're getting in this little set here is just absolutely tiny like all of these little barrels i feel like i'm just gonna lose them immediately and the stuff potentially just clogs up the boat for gameplay purposes though so i'll dump it all out as i've said it's a very decently sized boat with a nicely sculpted interior here's a villager that we'll be looking at in a moment for scale and accompanying him sir for scale for scale. As you can see, there's plenty of room in this boat for combat within or without. It's no pirate ship, but she's a good boat. Yes, this is quite understandably the main selling point of the set for a lot of people, and I do agree that it is certainly one of them, but I might actually prefer the card as I feel like it has a lot more use in many more situations as I feel like these games take place on land a lot more often. Before I give my score though, I do want to mention that I am missing something. Apparently there was a little bucket that was supposed to be in here. Well, I didn't get that. It's not a big deal. I'm not gonna chase Reaper down for the bucket, but that is a shame. It does add to the oops counter. All in all, this set gets a 9 out of 12 from me. Our next add-on will help populate those villages, towns, and cities. It's the Townsfolk set. This option was $20 for 20 figures back during the Kickstarter. That's a dollar per mini. Even if these aren't the most impressive minis, that's just great value in my opinion. And it's only gone up by 4 bucks in the new PM. So, that's hardly any change at all. It's still pretty much the same value. Anyways, this set contains a variety of humans. They're seemingly all humans. Any variety of poses and simple outfits. Some appear younger, some appear older, some look like guards, some look like merchants, or maybe even bandits or ruffians of some kind. Some appear to have kids, some are kids. It's just an all-around general purpose townsfolk set to fill out any generic village, at least ones with humans. On that note, with all of these only being humans, it does mean you miss out on those diverse townsfolk you could have gotten otherwise. You know, the dwarves, halflings, dragonfolk, anything, you, na you name it. On the other hand, it does mean you would be able to use these in pretty much any context, as long as it's a medieval or fantasy setting anyway. Although you could get away with a few of these in a more modern setting. Yep, if you just need a bunch of NPCs, or maybe one of these sticks out as a guard, or some other important character you need a mini for, this certainly is a valuable set for you, as it is for me. I give this set a solid 10 out of 12. This will be a great resource for populating any towns, or running any combat encounters within cities, and for anyone with that in mind, I think this is definitely a set worth picking up. Our final add-on of today's video is an interesting one. These are the Dragonfolk Adventurers, which are already at retail and out of the Pledge Manager. So if you want these, you can check your local hobby shop or go to Reaper's web store and order directly from there. That's not what makes these interesting though. What makes these interesting is that this item, along with a few others, was responsible for delaying my order, along with many others, as it found itself on the final, heavily delayed container headed for the Reaper HQ in the US. Because of how this unfolded, some of us ended up getting these not in the plastic baggies that you find most of the other Kickstarter items in, but in these unmarked retail blisters. In any event, I hadn't opened these yet, and I saved that moment for this very review. 
Now, when these do go to retail or when you buy them off the store, they won't all be in this one singular package. That was only for the Kickstarter. You'll have to buy these in separate little bundles of two, as there are six total of these dragon folk. First things first, you may notice that I don't need to do any assembly on these. These are all single mold, or perhaps someone has glued them some point earlier in the process. But nevertheless, I don't have to do anything. I believe the retail release will be the same story, as these are basically just the retail figures repackaged into this little blister. I'm very impressed by the quality of these sculpts, and they all cover the bases of your typical adventuring archetypes. This here would be, I guess, a thief or a rogue. They all have specific labels, but you could look at any of these and find maybe multiple classes per figure. And some of these could function as player characters or NPCs or just townsfolk like this bard here. They could very well just be someone playing in a tavern. No special magical abilities whatsoever. Love the use of the loot here. Classic bard instrument. And I also like how he's got his other hand on his blade and it's kind of blocked by the loot, presumably from whatever angle their head is facing. This paladin or fighter is also, well, it could be a cleric, is a great uh, armored figure. Love the shield, it's sort of depicting a dragon with its wing curled up. All of the scales on these figures are very pronounced, and the heads are all kind of similar. So I wonder if they took the same base sculpt and then took it and, you know, just kind of altered it in little ways. Be a fine way to save time and probably money. It doesn't really matter either way, as they made a bunch of neat-looking, unique sculpts for a species that doesn't always get a lot of rep in the tabletop community, at least in, like, figure form. This barbarian is uh, probably one of the favorites of mine here. I really love their axe. And it does have that sort of dot motif that we saw on the shield before, and it's sort of carried by a few of these figures, if you look closely. We next get a ranger, or just a ranged fighter. Remember? Bow and arrow is very good on the fighter class in D&D &D as well. They've got a great set of armor. You can see that little dot motif reappearing on the quiver there. It is mounted on the back, which I've discussed in previous videos, like the Greek Odyssey. But how that's not necessarily the best way to do it, but whatever. And then finally, we finish off with a wizard, or whatever spellcaster you want to use this as. Really love all the little baubles and things hanging down from them. And the staff is just a really nice sort of coiled wizard staff. And looks like they got a big old bag slung over the side. Just a, a really cool little spellcaster mini. I gotta say, this little pack was worth the wait. These are some good minis. I don't really have very many dragon folk or dragonborn or anything like that. So, um... Yeah, this is a very welcome little group for my collection. I give this set an 11 out of 12. It's a great add-on. Definitely check it out on the store if you're interested. And with that, we conclude our sixth set of add-on reviews. Quite a lot of figures in today's episode. Which of them was your favorite? Was it one of the dragon folk? Maybe one of the townsfolk stuck out to you? Or maybe you're just really into small plastic furniture, like me. Let me know your answers and what you thought of the sets in the comments down below. You can expect many more of these shorter form videos to come, where I will break down nearly every add-on from this Kickstarter. For the bigger sets of figures, be sure to check out the review playlist for the core set and the expansions. And if you see anything in there or in these you're interested in buying, head to pm.reapermini.com or reapermini.com for more information. Some of these have already hit retail, so you should be able to pick some of them up pretty soon without having to wait till 2022, as you will if you order from the PM. If you found this video helpful, enjoyable, or some other adjective, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, and seeing your support really genuinely makes my day. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching, have a good one, 
and let's go paint some minis. <laughs> 